Hi guys and welcome to 123 MyT's video on an update of the Sapphire mining rig. Okay guys, so this is part two to the mining rig video that I did earlier. So as you can see, we've had a few changes here. Um, we initially started off in the other video, we only had three uh, Sapphire cards, but now we've added an extra two more cards here. And we've also got a, a Strix 1070 card on the end there. The more cards obviously that we add, the higher the hash rate that we'll be able to get and uh, the higher the income that we can make off the rig. So what you really want to try and do is get as many cards fitted onto one motherboard, one CPU as you can. And then it becomes more and more cost effective to do it that way. So what am I mining? Well, previously I was using nice hash, which allows you to sell your hashing power in return for Bitcoin. But just recently I've decided to change from nice hash and use the Claymore miner and start mining Ethereum and Decreed in the dual miner setup. I will talk about nice hash and Claymore miner in another video, but in this video I want to focus a little bit more on the hardware and the problems that arose when building the rig. When I was first building the rig I started out, I was actually trying to use a USB key uh, to build the rig. I ran into some issues with this. First of all, uh, because it was a virtual drive it wouldn't allow me to run Windows updates so I was pretty much running Windows base Windows without Windows updates which can be uh, a security risk so I decided to move back to the SATA drive that also also when I was using the USB I was getting the virtual memory problems as well and I tried you know setting the virtual memory to the 16 gig uh, and it still wasn't working I was having issues with the cards just crashing and blue screening all the time so I moved back to the SATA drive and it seemed to uh, fix uh, those issues with that. Another really frustrating issue I was having is not all graphics cards are created equally. So even though this graphics card here, the one with the red dot, is the same is the same model and make as all the other graphics cards I've got in the rig, basically this model here would not do a memory clock of 2100. All the other cards in this rig do a memory clock of 2100, but whenever I set this card to do a uh, overclock of the memory at 2100 the whole system would just crash and uh, the mining would stop and that causes you to lose the money so it, uh, it was really frustrating and probably one of the hardest things that you will have to uh, work through uh, when you try to set up one of these rigs. How did I work it out? I pulled each card out individually and I put it in a separate computer so it was on its own and then I just tried to do the clocks for each, each uh, card. Every card did uh, ran the clocks without problems except for this one. Um, the, basically the uh, afterburner setting memory clock that I do for the whole rig is all based around what this one card can take. So for example, normally I would set the rest of the clocks to 2100 in memory. Because this uh, graphics card is in this rig, I have to actually set it uh, as low as 1960. So 1960 it still allows the rest of the rig to run fairly well and it doesn't crash. My advice for you guys if you're getting blue screens and this type of thing just try and set your clocks to standard and then change your clock speed really slowly so you know change it by 20 and test it change it by 20 again. If you have the luxury where you have a second computer pull each card out of the second computer and just run it on its own and see if you're getting the reboots uh, on a different computer with just that card and then that might tell you that it's a faulty card. Okay guys, so the next upgrade that I want to try and do is I actually want to try and get a seventh graphics card uh, on this motherboard. And you can actually do that by putting a PCIe riser card adapter in the M.2 slot, which is that little slot that you see uh, just there. So it, it slots in like that and then you can have another one of these graphics card risers coming up from there and hopefully uh, hopefully get a seventh GPU on this motherboard. Alright so the next thing I want to talk about is the power draw so if you can see there so on full mining capacity with all cards working so six GPUs working we've got a watts of 850, uh, 840 roughly and that's with all the cards working really, really hard. Now, if you have a different miner, it might use less power than that. But actually, for six GPUs running, a motherboard, power supply, RAM, and a hard drive, that's not a bad power draw. Now, you can clock these cards down. This is the problem when you have a faulty card. As I mentioned earlier with this one here, 
I can't really adjust it much more because it becomes unstable. And the problem is if I wanted to try and turn the temperature down on the rest of the cards, this card, because it's slightly faulty, okay, would, would blue screen. So it makes it really difficult to tweak it very much when you have a faulty card. Now I'm going to try and take this one back and get an RMA for it and uh, hopefully get a replacement. Let's talk a little bit about uh, how many mega hashes you get. So with the mining of Ethereum, I get about 28 to 29 mega hashes uh, per card. On the ASUS Strix uh, 1070 at the end there, I'm getting about 29 to 30 mega hashes, so slightly more. Um, and I'm getting about 600 uh, decreed uh, mega hashes uh, on each card. So I think that's a pretty good result, really. Now, how did I get such a high amount of mega hashes on each card? I did a BIOS modification, and that BIOS modification allows you to get the mega hashes from each card from about 22 mega hashes right up to 28, 29. 30 mega hashes. So um, I won't go into it too much in this video, but I will do a video on how to modify the BIOS on your graphics cards so that you guys, uh, if you want to try that, you can do it at a later stage. Okay guys, so that's pretty much it from me. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the comments section below and I'll try to answer uh, whatever questions or comments you leave. Also, I'll leave the links in the description below of all the hardware if you're interested in buying the hardware so that's pretty much it for me if it was helpful also please leave a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching guys see you in the next one bye bye